Okay, 1.5. Now this starts out uh, talking about the definition of infinite limits. So we're looking at this idea of what happens when we have a, uh, an asymptote. Okay, but it, it's going to start right out. Not necessarily hard, but it's going to go right into the nitty gritty. And so we're talking about the definition of infinite limits, and it says let f be a function. So as always, we're talking about functions right now. Let f be a function that is defined at every real number in some open interval. And let c, such that c is an element of that open interval, or c is in between a and b. Now, f does not have to be defined at c. So if you, excuse me, if you take a look at uh, uh, something akin to this, where you have um, 1 over x graphs like this, okay? So at x equals 0, it's not defined, because we have you know, two different ways to go. It's not continuous, therefore it's not defined. Uh, then the statement that the limit as x approaches c of f of x, so the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals infinity it means that you can find okay that doesn't mean that it's easy to find but you can find some sort of delta such that so for all m greater than 0 for all numbers that are uh, that are positive there is some delta such that if the uh, the distance between x and c is less than delta, then the function increases without bound. Okay, so it just keeps increasing and increasing and increasing. These are the function values. These are the y's. All right, so before, remember, we were looking at with limits, we were saying, okay, now we have some, uh, we want to squeeze it down. We were saying that uh, in the old, the old days, uh, that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to l uh, means that uh, uh, there exists a delta such that 0 less than absolute value of x minus c less than delta implies uh, the distance between uh, the value and l, function value and l is less than any number greater than 0 epsilon. Okay, so or I'm sorry, less than less than any number you can think of. So this is the way the limits were before. Now we're talking about okay, now we got to make it bigger. So you're just reversing that sign and going right back to the definition of the limit. All right, to demonstrate this, let's work through number 75. And 75 says prove or show the limit as x approaches three from the right or from the positive of 1 over x minus 3 is in fact infinity or positive infinity. Okay, let's, let's I want you to think about something here quick before we get going. It's coming at it from the positive, which means at we're coming from the positives and we're headed this way. Okay, we're headed back to the left from the right. Now, that means that we're going to be looking at numbers that are bigger or more positive than 3. So let's say like number the number 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. That means that we're going to be looking at things where x minus 3 is greater than 0. And that means that 1 over x minus 3 is greater than 0. That might not seem like much now, but we're, we're going to need this later on. Okay, so now, according to my definition up here, I need to find a delta so that whenever delta or whenever the distance between x and this mysterious c value is less than delta, then my function increases without bound. Okay, so my function, remember we started with epsilon and kind of worked our way backwards for delta. That's what we're going to do here. So the very first thing I've got is f of x is bigger than any number I can think of n or m. Well, our function is 1 over x minus 3. It's greater than m. Okay. So let's take a look at this, and let's say that uh, 
let's say that, well, if I switch, if I solve for x minus 3, okay, or I can just flip both sides. Let's do that. Let's flip both sides. So when we flip both sides, x minus 3 comes up to the top, m goes underneath, and now because we flipped it or erased it to a negative exponent, we have to flip the sign. Okay. If you don't remember that rule, just, just go ahead and look back up. But now, up here, we said that x minus 3 is greater than 0. And from the assumption, m has to be greater than 0. Okay. So from the assumption, m has to be greater than 0. So that means that all of this is greater than 0, which means that the absolute value of x minus 3 is also less than the absolute value or 1 over the absolute value of m. Okay. Well, now this is positive, so I'm positive right here. Well, if you look, x minus 3, if we look at our delta, we want uh, 0 less than absolute value of x minus 3 less than delta. Okay, so let's go ahead and make delta. Let's choose that delta is equal to uh, 1 over m. All right, now there's something I have to fix up here because I didn't think about it first. And that is, what is our open interval? Because it's a limit, we need an open interval. And so I'm going to choose 2 and 4, uh, which means that I'm saying that this is really 3 plus 1 and 3 minus 1. Uh, whoop, that's plus. This is minus over here. Which means that delta is equal to 1. So I'm going to say that delta in this case is the minimum of either 1 over m or 1. I'm going to assume it's 1 over m. Okay, so I'm going to assume that m is not so stinking small that we're going to have something bigger than 1. So m is greater than 1. So if I do that, then I know that 0 is less than x minus 3 is less than 1 over m, which is delta. Okay, so now, because of that, because of that now, I can say that, well, x minus 3 is less than 1 over root m, or I'm sorry, 1 over m, which means, because we're always talking about positive, that x minus 3 is less than 1 over m, which also means that 1 over x minus 3 is greater than m. That's what we wanted to prove. So we said, okay, if we let delta be 1 over m, then it's true. And that's all we had to prove. So there's an example of how, uh, of how the, the formal definition of infinite limits works. Now, I'm not expecting you guys to do a formal definition of infinite limits, but I wanted you to see how it works because eventually you may.